here in Hollywood, where I'm sure a lot of people are very busy monitoring the events in Washington for a, a future multi-part docudrama starring Nick Nolte as Donald Trump. This is um, <laughs> between Trump and the Joker. It was quite a weekend for villains and a lot of makeup. <laughs> we learned yesterday that a second whistle has blown. This one reportedly has first-hand information about the president's call to Ukraine, and there are said to be multiple other whistleblowers waiting in the wings, which made for a busy Sunday morning. You know, they have these political shows on Sunday mornings. Yesterday, they had trouble even booking anyone to defend Trump, which, <laughs> for real. Well, yeah, I'd love to have my ass handed to me on TV today. My daughter has a soccer game, maybe next week, but <laughs> Trump doesn't know who the new whistleblower is, but he still called that person a partisan this morning, which is like, it's like eating a, a steak and saying, I can tell the chef is a Libra. I just know. <laughs> but Trump says his repeated and public request for Ukraine and China and maybe others to dig up dirt on his number one opponent, Joe Biden, have nothing to do with politics and everything to do with his never-ending crusade against corruption. I'm only interested in corruption. I don't care about politics. I don't care about Biden's politics. I never thought Biden was going to win. I don't care about politics, but I do care about corruption. Yeah, well, <laughs> so do we, and that's why you're getting impeached. But the story, it seems to, it seems to get worse for Trump by the hour. He swears up and down there was no quid pro quo with Ukraine in regard to investigating Biden, but text messages, including this exchange between Kurt Volker, who was his former special envoy for Ukraine, and one of President Zelensky's top aides suggests otherwise. Volker wrote, good lunch, thanks, heard from White House. Assuming President Z convinces Trump he will investigate slash get to the bottom of what happened in 2016, we will nail down date for a visit to Washington. Good luck. See you tomorrow, Kurt. And that's, that's it, right? I mean, that's the, it's the, if that gun isn't smoking, it's vaping like a mother right now. <laughs> And now the fall guy for this mess, or at least one of them anyway, could be Trump's Secretary of Energy, Rick Perry, who is rumored to be on the way out. After, after Trump reportedly said the only reason he made the call is because Rick Perry put him up to it, Rick Perry said today that while he absolutely asked Trump multiple times to call the president of Ukraine, it was only to talk about energy, not about the Bidens, but somehow Trump blames him for this. Basically, his position is the call was perfect, I did nothing wrong, and stupid Rick Perry is the one who made me do it. <laughs> All the best people. And you'd think that if a phone call, any phone call is gonna bring Rick Perry down, it would be this phone call that he made <laughs> while squatting on someone's lawn. So, to recap, we now have two whistleblowers. We have a transcript of the phone call, a bunch of highly incriminating text messages. And not only did Trump do it privately with Ukraine, he asked China to do it on television. If this was Judge Judy, he'd be out before the first mesothelioma commercial. <laughs> but that's not to say that, that Trump doesn't have supporters. The president's son, Eric, for instance, was on Fox and Friends this morning defending daddy and using this absolutely perfect analogy to attack Joe Biden's son. Could you imagine, and I wrote an op-ed about this, could you imagine if I got $50,000 a month in an industry that I knew nothing about. Hmm, let me try to see if I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, I can, I kinda can. Eric Trump's resume is, ju all, is just his birth certificate with his dad's name circled in a red pen. <laughs> and then, while every head in Washington is spinning, Trump pulled another doozy last night when the White House announced that the president, after another phone call with another unsavory foreign leader, will pull all U.S. troops out of Syria. And this is a big deal because Removing American troops will allow Turkey to go in and attack our Kurdish allies, which would be a big boost for ISIS. And the president made the decision after a call with the president of Turkey, who happens to be another one of these dangerous strongmen he's so fond of. So officials at the Pentagon were completely blindsided by this. They had no idea Trump was going to do it. And everyone is furious. And a rare show of unity, Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell denounced the decision. And even the president's own pot-bellied pig, Lindsey Graham, called into Fox and Friends 
to label the move a disaster in the making that will undo all the gains we've made and throw the region into further chaos. And then he hung up chanting, four more years, four... But Trump... <laughs> I think he may have swapped the Adderall for airplane glue this time because he <laughs> tweeted back, as I have stated strongly before, and just to reiterate, if Turkey does anything that I, in my great and unmatched wisdom, consider to be off limits, I will totally destroy and obliterate the economy of Turkey. I've done before. <laughs> One step out of the line, he will run Turkey into the ground like it was one of his casinos in Atlantic City. <laughs> in his great and unmatched wisdom. Step by great. In my great and unmatched wisdom. He's now, he's talking now like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the president, though, he's been doing his best to look busy while the impeaches are picked. Over the weekend, he hosted a summit at the White House for young black conservatives. And you'll never guess, in a group of young black conservatives, you'll never guess whose name he brought up. I get along with Kanye for a long time. You <laughs> saw the way he, when he was with the White House, he puts the hat on. I think for one day, I went up through the poles like through the roof, I tell you. He is uh, with, with the African-American community. They like Kanye, and they like Kim Kardashian. Ah, yes. and, and by they, I mean you, people. <laughs> we found out today that we may finally get to see Trump's taxes. A federal judge has rejected the president's bizarre claim that he is immune from criminal investigation and therefore does not have to turn over his tax records. The judge said uh, that his, the legal argument was, quote, repugnant to the nation's governmental structure and constitutional values. And by the way, this investigation is related to the payments Trump made during the campaign to Stormy Daniels and that Playboy Playmate, which, how crazy is this presidency that we forgot about that? Like, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot he did that. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals granted a last-minute stay of the ruling, which means this might not happen for a while. But I love the irony that we're going to release Trump's tax returns without his consent. We're just going to grab him by the subpoena and see what happens. <laughs> and his team, his team now is trying to convince themselves and anyone dumb enough to believe it that all this impeachment stuff is good, not bad for his re-election prospects. His acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney has been telling staffers that if the president gets impeached, he could win 45 states in 2020. Which I don't think he could name 45 states by 2020. <laughs> but I'm not sure the president agrees with that because he had a call with House Republicans over the weekend where he said, among other things, impeachment would be bad for his resume. <laughs> <laughs> Trump worrying about his resume is like R. Kelly worrying about his Uber rating. It doesn't make a difference. It's... And his supporters, at least the ones who'll still go on TV, are now trying to say he was joking when he encouraged China to investigate Joe Biden. You watched what the president said. He's not saying China's investigate, but... Well, I, I doubt if the China comment was serious, to tell you the truth. You really think he was serious about thinking that China's going to investigate uh, the Biden family? I don't think it's a real request. I think, again, I think he did it to gig you guys. Yeah, well, it's hard to believe. I'll give you that. But the question now is, was the president joking? And, it, well, if he was, there's only one way to find out. Mr. President, where are you going? Out that way. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Let's Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> the one time he's polite is when he's trying to get the hell out of there from... <laughs> Thank you all very much. Another surprising critic of Trump today was Pat Robertson, who, in case you don't know, is a 300-year-old man who hosts a show called The 700 Club. He said Trump is in danger of losing the mandate of heaven which uh, is shocking, but it wasn't the most shocking soundbite from his show today. This was, listen closely, because um, you can hear, you won't be able to see it, but listen, because something funny happens at the end of this clip. Michelle, uh, you pointed out uh, in Mexico, they have standards totally contrary to what these globalists are talking about. Yes, yeah, so I talk about uh, an entire shelter network <laughs> that's been... <laughs> Let's listen to that one more time. And... So I talk about uh, an entire shelter network <laughs> that's been... <laughs> wow, this is... Um... Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.